Hey guys and gals and non-binary pals. My name is Zana. And I'm Jason. And this is Nerd Initiation, where my friend here uh, teaches me everything I need to know on my journey to nerd enlightenment. Come join us. How are you doing today, Jason? I'm doing good, Zana. How are you? Good. You know, can't complain. I get so excited every time we get to start this <laughs> in the mornings. <laughs> You know, one thing I'm noticing is I think your energy can pile has gotten higher. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's grown since last week. Couldn't help but notice. You know, I it's been a week, so I drink more. I have to, you know, have energy for the job that we do. I know, and yeah, you're getting caffeine now from another source from another source that's right you gotta always have that caffeine in at least it's not I, I drugs can't. yeah exactly but i can't wait till episode 50 when those cans are just all in your background <laughs> it's it's just the whole room. Can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh yeah for oh, those of funny. you just listening i have kind of a tower of energy drink cans behind me just because when i work I, I'm sitting in the place where I work as well, and then I just kind of put the cans back there when I finish them. Oh, well. <laughs> but you make it look decorative and fun. That's what's important. I guess. You know, it's a pyramid. <laughs> it's a pyramid, so it's it's nice and organized. I don't know. Aesthetic. I was going to say, one new thing that the viewers might notice is we're not wearing our glasses this week. We are not. What are we doing with our lives? I don't know. I feel like maybe we want people to see what we look like without them, and then we'll just go back to them. Like, I'm totally cool with that, if you this are. This is our real faces. I know. They're probably thinking, who are these people? Because they're like Weird. people in the DC universe who can't recognize Clark Kent and Superman. They're like, where, where did they go? So. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about that. Too. Now I'm a different person. <laughs> You know, that's a that's a joke that people make about like how stupid people are in comics or whatever. Well, like Sailor but Moon will, had the same thing. Yeah. I will give you two examples of how I think it could legitimately work. And one is Zoe De Chanel, like that meme that went around of her where she didn't that's have true. bangs or glasses, like she had her, her glasses off and her hair pulled to the side. And then who is that? Katy Perry? Exactly. Nobody knows who that is. <laughs> But the other thing in the old Superman movies from the late 70s and 80s, I think Christopher Reeve really pulled off the two separate guys thing. Like he made Clark Kent such a different looking and distinctive character. I think it could happen, you know, where people could be fooled like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so right now, as we stand, we are in our superhero mode if we were in DC. Or our regular everyday mode if we were in anime. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes, the other thing, too. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, sometimes you just need a mask and be a superhero. Or you take your mask off and then you're and then you're the superhero. So it just depends on what universe that you're, you're in. That makes me think about the whole Superman secret identity thing. Yeah. Because it used to be the old comics you know, from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, into mm -hmm. the 80s. Superman was very public and he would just, you know, he'd give an interview and be like, yes, I have a secret identity. So then everybody wants to find out a secret identity. And it's like, dude, why do you even have to tell people? Yeah. You're going around without a mask. You're already not hiding your identity or your face. Um, and that's something they started doing in the comics in the mid 80s and after the newer writers were just like, we're going to ignore all that and just Superman's not going to mention having a secret identity. People will just assume he's Superman all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. he's flying around without a mask. Yeah. Well, like in the last Spider-Man movie too, you know, like the, uh, the bad guy, I can't remember his name, you know, just outed. Mysterio? Yeah. Mysterio just outed Peter Parker like that. It was like, like 
um, Spider-Man is Peter Parker. And then everybody was all looking at him crazy. <laughs> and, you know, it, you either you either try to keep it a secret or, you know, the bad guys going to keep it, like, put it out for you. Like, why even try to have a secret identity? But So are you... Are you thinking secret identities are kind of irrelevant in modern times? I think so. I think so. Because in modern times, you know, it just, it feels like it doesn't matter all that much. Because people are going to be like, oh, that's cool. I'm just going to watch it on YouTube anyway or whatever. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so like, like Peter Parker, like, he's just going to have the bad guy just tell everybody that that kind of sucks. Even like try. <gasps> Speaking of Peter Parker, did you see the new trailer? I did, yes. That's so cute. And it was very exciting. For no some way reason, this, I wanted to say No Way Out, which is like an old song by Starship from the 80s. And then that song got into my head. And now I'm going to listen to that later. So oh, good. <laughs> well, I thought it was really cute um, that, you know, they had Tom Holland and, and the actors like talk about Tom just like. <laughs> spoiling everything all the time which I think is like Tom Holland is so cute I just want to put him in my pocket he's adorable I don't care what anybody says he's my favorite spider I like him a lot I think he's really talented um I like what he's brought to the character in terms of like making him youthful um and having it be like believable that he's a teenager, but also, yeah. I mean, he's doing things that nobody's really done with the character in live action. Like he gives him a Queens accent. That was yeah. huge. Like this is a guy who grew up in Queens. He should sound like he's from Queens, New York. That That's right. And I think that's great. And I, the um, <laughs> acrobats that he does too, like he just makes it really believable that he has those supernatural kind of powers and that's so cool and i uh did you the the board in the back way too that that states the name of it i like that they have all of the easter way easter eggs in there and did you print it out i have a printout of it yes i wanted to like look over that with you oh that's so funny there is a lot in here yeah yeah like uh, i like all of like the names that are like crossed out like no <laughs> I think that's so cute. They have some, yeah, they have all different home theme names and that's mm -hmm. kind of been what the series has done. That's Homecoming, true. Far From Home, now No Way Home. Now No Way Home. I wonder what that what that means. Cause I, I, I know in like other things we're now seeing everybody limp back in. It, where do you think this No Way Home is? is going to start like in the timeline of the MCU like is he going is he is it going to be because he's like not blimped yet or we're going to see what happened to everybody when when they blimped is that the word that I'm thinking of blimped Blimped? when they all disappeared it's a term they use yeah I don't know um and then maybe blipped blipped Blipped. or is that what cats do when they stick their tongue out the blap 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 we'll just say blap we we'll both like blap. cats yes cats <laughs> they blap <laughs> so well so are you thinking that maybe it'll be some kind of like flashback to what was going on around endgame or maybe maybe like uh because what i was thinking like no way home is that like he he is in that space maybe maybe we'll we'll know we'll kind of get to find out where everybody was if they were in like a different place or what's going on were they all that's together actually that's a good idea and that's something that could be explored i think should be a um that limbo yeah kevin feige calls on a right no. now <laughs> the guy who's the guy who runs the mcu we got some ideas <laughs> we got, we got you. Oh, uh, there, there is a lot better nerds out there than I. <laughs> That's right. We're still initiating you. So eventually <laughs> you'll be there. Eventually. eventually. But I was, I was going to say my thought on it is, I think it's more metaphorical. Mm -hmm. No way home, meaning he, 
Peter's going to see that he can't get back to his life the way it was now that he's been outed, you know, things have changed fundamentally. Um, That's my thought on it. And they might do something a little more literal too. Like maybe he's trapped someplace he can't get out of. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Um, And I know for you, I know Spider-Man didn't they, a new comic come out this week? Something like that? Like, yes. the timings are, are pretty cool that, you know, they have the trailer come out the same week as, like, a new comic. That's kind of cool. That is. That's really good uh, corporate synergy, as they say. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And the, and the cool thing is it, it kind of piggybacks onto what we discussed a little bit last week with that whole um, storyline from 2007 where Mephisto erased the marriage with Peter and Mary oh. Jane. Now I've not read the issue yet. It's um, it's issue 60 of, I want to say volume five, um, because periodically they'll stop the title and then restart it with a new number one. Like if the, if the book were still going, it'd be like issue 800 something. Um, but sometimes they just reset it just for like a refresh kind of uh, feeling. Right. Um, but what ended up happening, and I haven't read it yet. I'm going to pick it up later today. I'm going to go see my friends at Fanfare Comics in Kalamazoo. Shout out to all of you. Um, I haven't been there in two months. Um, I had my comics shipped to me last month. Um, just to like save driving and to not drive in treacherous wintry conditions. No. Yeah. But, but as you've noticed here in Michigan in late February, things have actually warmed up a little bit. A lot of snow's melted. So it's actually like cool to go outside again. Thank goodness. Um, I know. Like I, I even took a walk. Fever. Yeah. What? <laughs> I took a walk yesterday. It was still so, like slightly light outside when I got off work. And I went outside and I walked outside. How did that feel? <laughs> it felt good, Jason. It felt real good. Now, from what I remember about you, you were quite a walker for a while. Like, yeah, since you've been living in your spot near the city, you walked a lot. I do. I do walk a lot. I like to look around and there's a lot of bookshops and things like that near me. So I, I'll go and walk to the bookshops and the coffee shops and things like that, the local businesses. But I, I do like to walk. I like to, um, when I lived in LA, I was a dog walker for a long time so I would just walk oh, yeah. all the time with the puppies and because I love animals but um <laughs> uh I I do enjoy walking I like to walk a lot just to you know kind of soak in the world around me and I, I like to do that but, well when it's safe you should come visit me and then we will go and walk to all the fun things I would love that Yes, let's do that. <laughs> what were we talking maybe, about? <laughs> oh, yeah, we digress. We were talking about <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, hell yeah. Where where did we leave off with that? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> Talked about Mephisto stealing Spider-Man's Oh, marriage. the new issue of Spider-Man, um, issue 60. I haven't bought it yet, but what I understand, they make some kind of oblique reference to that storyline. And... Um, I'm not sure where they're headed with this. I think they've been leaving hints about addressing it again, like that mm. that story plot line. Right. I don't know if they're looking to reverse it or not. I'm kind of hoping that's the case. I'd like to see all that restored again. Um, right. Because when I was growing up in the comics, Peter and Mary Jane were married, and I always enjoyed that. Yeah, because that's very, very sweet. Well, right now in the movies, he's a little bit young, but <laughs> yes. But I, I'm I'm noticing the MCU is going on, like, trying to, for the most part now, uh, follow the comics. Like, um, if it's going to talk about Mephisto, there's a lot of rumor going around that Mephisto is going to end up in, like, WandaVision or the other shows that are coming out, too. And I think, I think it was Loki that had, like, um, a devil character in the background or something like that so there's like little easter eggs going on um in like the teaser trailers so you know right if they're corresponding with the comics that are coming out that you know more about then maybe you know all of those theories about Mephisto 
you know, are going to come to fruition in these things and maybe be able to um, tie everything together as well as like a new big bad in the MCU. Right? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I totally, I, no, I'm totally with you on this. A lot of these things can't be a coincidence the way they're leaving all these hints, unless it's going to be a huge red herring that's like making us zig when we should be zagging. <laughs> but True. either way, this is by design. I mean, they want us to think something or they want to drop these hints for some reason. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And like, here's, here's a rumor. Sorry to interrupt, but like, no, go ahead. I talked to my son yesterday, Justin, if you're listening. Um, hey, Justin. Dad says hi. Oh my God. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm not embarrassing you too much. Um, oh, dads do. He's, um, Justin's a freshman at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Um, he's enjoying warmer nice, weather than what we have weather. here now. <laughs> but um, he's been really into WandaVision too. He's somebody who kind of saw the Marvel movies here and there. He wasn't a big fanatic. He's not seen all of them. Um, he likes the Spider-Man ones especially. He doesn't watch the Marvel movies a lot, um, although he's been getting into them more lately. Um, he has liked the Spider-Man movies. I think he saw the Avengers movies like Infinity War and Endgame. He's really into WandaVision, though, and he's also somebody who's really into all the theories. Um, we talk every week, just like you and I do, about what's going on. And this is something he touched upon yesterday that I first heard from Kevin Smith on Fat Man Beyond that the last episode is going to have like a humongous cameo in it Ooh. and kevin smith was like what if they what if it's robert dowdy jr somehow they bring back iron man and i mean that would be the best possible thing that could happen but justin told me yesterday he's hearing the rumor might be that it's going to be benedict cumberbatch coming back as dr strange and yes. that's going to lead into that movie which is going to be all about the multiverse that's so what we'll I was, see. That's what I was hearing too, because actually I was watching an interview with the cast of One Division, and they, uh, Doctor Strange was on it. Ooh, I know. See, here's the thing that I've noticed. Like, yes, yeah, watch the theory videos, but I like to watch interviews with the actors because sometimes they let little things slip or, you know, they'll be specifically told to say a certain thing and then they'll drop little hints that you don't realize are hints until like later. Yes. So they brought... I don't know if you can hear him going insane. Um, but they, they Zan is a frustrated cat mama right now. <laughs> I'm trying to do this and he's so distracting. Um, so they brought in uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and um, they brought in Falcon. Oh, Falcon. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As like to like ask questions about uh, or ask questions to uh, Wanda and Vision, the, the actors who played Wanda and Vision. And um, so I thought it was very interesting that they brought those specific two actors in. To, to like talk with the WandaVision cast because we all know Falcon and uh, the Winter Soldier is uh, coming out, but then Doctor Strange. So I agree with you that they're gonna bring Doctor Strange on uh, to be able to like connect uh, the two movies with the Doctor Strange uh, multiverse madness that's coming up. Yes. It's gonna be really awesome. It is. And I, then, from what I understand, too, Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be dealing with multiversal elements as well. Is it and true that they're going to bring all the Spider-Mans together? Yes. It is true? Yes. You're going to see a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man <laughs> and an Andrew Garfield as they are in on different Earths in the multiverse. It could be the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> you know, Aside from The Flash, which is coming out in 2022 from DC, which is going to have multiple Batman. They're going to make a Flash movie? Yes. DC and has know... multi-universes too? Heck yeah. What? DC started it. Way back in the early really? 60s in the comics, they created the concept of Earth 2. Wow. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. So if you want to 
I mean, we could do a quick history of multiverse because, I mean, I could spend probably five episodes on it, but... <laughs> So the way DC started it in the comics in the 1930s and 40s is when they started publishing all their famous characters, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, yeah. Aquaman, Green Arrow. Um, then they had the original versions of the Flash, um, Green Lantern, Hawkman, the Atom, and they all formed together the team, the Justice Society of America. And what ended up happening was in the late 40s, superhero comics started getting less popular. Um, you started seeing different genres take over. Um, that's when, like, war comics were popular, horror comics, romance comics, for the ladies, of course. <laughs> so, um, but they were still publishing, like, the really popular ones, like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They all never went away. So by the mid-50s... Um, there was a superhero revival. People were interested in superheroes again. So they brought back characters like the Flash and Green Lantern and, and uh, like Hawkman, the Atom. But they were different versions. It was like same name, but different characters, different um, costume designs, um, different secret identities. It's like they were using that IP for new characters who were kind of similar um, like the original Green Lantern was Alan Scott and his ring was magic based. But in the 50s, it was Hal Jordan and it was more sci fi based. Mm -hmm. The original Flash was Jay Garrick, um, who was a scientist. Um, in the 50s, it was Barry Allen, who was like a CSI scientist. So, and what they did in the first appearance of the Barry Allen Flash, they acknowledged that old Flash from the 40s by showing Barry reading a comic with that old Flash in it. Oh. That's what inspired him to become the Flash because he read about a character from the 40s named the Flash. Oh. Flash forward a couple years, there's a story where like, you know, Barry Allen Flash was so fast, he could, you know, break the time barrier if he went faster mm -hmm. than the speed of light. And he was running so fast one day, he popped over into a different universe. Very cool. And, you know, you know who was in that universe? The Jay Garrick Flash that he had read about in comics was a real dude. Fun. So then they they like, okay, they're talking, they're comparing notes. And um, Barry Allen Flash was just like, the guy who wrote your stories was named Gardner Fox, which is true. That's a, that was a real guy. And he said some of the story ideas came to him from dreams. And maybe mm -hmm. his dreams were like tuning into Earth 2 stuff. And that's where he got his ideas. You know, that that could very well be. That's like a theory for a lot of different things. You, you know, you can get that from comics. But I think that is a good theory because, you know, I definitely believe in multiverses or other universes or you know things that dimensions. are side by side dimension, like next door dimensions. Uh, like our, timelines. our friend Jaden. Um, always says like you know there's there's something in next door going on or you know sh she has uh, definitely in tune with next door universes definitely um, <laughs> and her favorite superhero is Spider-Man so she looks she, she would very much like this episode <laughs> yes Jaden if you're listening I hope you are enjoying the subject matter and of course <laughs> Nanu Nanu we love you you're great Hopefully, hopefully you'll come on the show sometime and talk about some of the stuff you're into. Yes, definitely. But, but, um, but um, well, that whole idea of like a multiverse, that's when they're mm -hmm. like, okay, these newer heroes are on Earth 1. The old heroes whose adventures were in the 40s were from Earth 2, and they went on from there. The Earth 1 and Earth 2 characters would team up periodically. Oh, cool. Earth 1, they had the Justice League, which was inspired by the Justice Society. Um, mm, okay. they discovered other Earths, like Earth 3 is where, um, it was all the same heroes, but they were criminals. Like Superman <laughs> was a bad guy named Ultraman and Batman was a bad guy named Owlman. Owlman? Um, I know, doesn't that sound frightening? <laughs> Urgh. But if you think about it, owls are scary and they're fierce and, you know. They and they have the really and... long legs. Yeah, yeah. Owls could be scary. Now, if you look up this guy's costume online, it was not scary, but um, <laughs> but it was really, 
it's just such a fun idea the whole idea of multiverses mm -hmm. one last part of the dc thing was like the writers in the i think mid to late 60s were like okay we have these old characters but superman batman and wonder woman were around back then too how do we explain this so then they came up with the idea that there were earth two versions of those characters as well so like the new superman could meet the old superman from the 40s and that was Very a really cool. cool idea i thought that is yeah. cool yeah and the way they portrayed old superman was they would draw his costume kind of like how it looked in the 40s and he was more rugged and had like the squintier eyed look and he had like graying temples like uh, it's okay. like time had gone on for him and he had aged a little bit that's cool that's cool now now does dc have nexus beings like like marvel does with um uh the scarlet witch Wanda. yeah yes and um for those who don't know nexus beings that's the idea that character characters can exist in different universes as the same character that's like the there same isn't person, right? they're the same person like they don't have a county part counter count, like universal counterpart right and dc i think does have characters like that i want to say some of their more cosmic beings are like that like the anti-monitor um pariah and the real comic nerds will know who i'm talking about with those characters um the idea of oa um for anyone who knows green lantern lore oa was the the planet that was the center of the universe in dc mm. and it didn't have a multiversal counterpart there was only one oa um oh, so that that isn't yeah that's an idea that dc has too and now marvel's taken it up as well Marvel's always had a multiverse too, but they never like, they never like delved into it as much as DC. They didn't team up with other multiverses as much. Like mm -hmm. their idea for a multiverse was the series What If. Have you ever heard of the What If series? I have not. No, is that, does that deal with everything as well? What that deals with is in the 70s, they came up with this idea where they'd call the title What If, and it would just be like, taking a storyline and just like throwing something different into it uh, like what if uncle ben stayed alive and aunt may died in oh. during spider-man's origin so it was a way for them to explore different ideas and see what the ramifications would have been but they would always say it took place on another earth like in another earth in the multiverse this is what happened Oh, interesting. And, okay. And that's where that idea of Earth 616 ultimately came from. Earth like Michigan. The main Earth, <laughs> yeah, Earth West Michigan area code. <laughs> the main Marvel universe that you read about in the comics was Earth 616. And then there were all these offshoots. Mm, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know about that. Yep. Hey, Maybe that's, that's what I'm here for, right? That's right. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. <laughs> you are welcome. Learn so, yes. new every day. So, yes, like Scarlet Witch is a Nexus character right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I, yeah, I think that last episode is going to be really awesome. Yeah, well, they, they kind of, uh, in the, not, but last week's episode of WandaVision, you know, they, they hinted at Nexus because that, that was the pill that she was taking um, to, you know be in her own the center of her own universe or whatever um so i take that pill every day <laughs> uh oh <laughs> oh <Yeah>. you <laughs> oh you you just so silly <laughs> uh, yeah uh, so I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe they're they're really going to go full out on that and then that's you know how they're going to bring Doctor Strange in. Is he a Nexus yeah. being, or is he? I don't think he is, right? I don't know a hundred percent, but to me, it seems like the there's a high probability would be um, if he's beings of that him. nature with those kinds of powers. Yeah. Can you hear that? You getting a little feedback there? <laughs> oh, this cat! <laughs> Why is he going crazy? Uh, okay. Anyway, yes, Doctor Strange is very cool. My cat's going insane. Um, 
But yes, so I agree with you bringing it full circle that I do think they're going to bring Doctor Strange in at the end of WandaVision. And I think that would be very, very cool. He's one of my favorite MCU characters. Um, Just, he's, I don't know, I like his witty quips. Um, I, I just like his backstory and how he had to really, really work for the power that he has now. And I think that's, that's very interesting. Um, cause you know, yeah, some of them are just, you know, born with these powers or, or whatnot. And although Thor is hilarious, but, um, but I, I think that would be very, very excited. And how do you feel about the white vision that they're bringing to life through Wanda's chaos magic? Oh, there's a lot of potential there. I think that's a really cool concept. And that goes back to the comics too. Um, in the late eighties, um, there was a storyline where like his memories were wiped or something. And he came back in this all like white costume and he was more, um, robotic. He was more cold. Like he didn't have a analytical. Soul. Exactly. He wasn't like the warmer vision with the more colorful costume but they eventually brought that back but when i started reading the comics that's how the vision was like that was my first exposure um to the character and they my son mentioned an idea like he thinks they're setting it up where it's going to be like this new vision versus the old vision Mm -hmm. like they're going to battle each other which would be sweet and then that (laughs) i sent him a clip um from youtube as soon as he said that i was like oh that reminds me of superman 3 when bad superman fights clark kent which is just epic right yeah that's 100 percent. but um but yeah i agree i I think they're going (laughs) i think they're going to send white vision into the hex and uh to and then you know they're gonna have visions fight but you know i think it's gonna be interesting because the vision in the hex is pure wanda chaos magic so Mm -hmm. you know does that mean he can tap into her or something like that since he's made from her magic since she has that creation magic that's a good point i'm almost wondering too if they'll somehow merge the beings you know the new the new vision body with his you know mind from the chaos magic yeah that's a really good way i think to bring the character back I think I think you're right, and I think that would be very interesting. Um, because if he is powered by Wanda's chaos magic, then you know there is a good chance that they can just put him together, make a vision sandwich in there, and then make the know, Uber Vision. Uber Vision, um, like then, Elizabeth Olsen is the Uber Olsen. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, and then now after, you know, if they are able to mesh, maybe at that point, Vision would be able to leave the hex and she can just drop the hex around West, Westville, West Point, Westview, West, Westview, and she can drop the hex West Point, Westview. the military academy. <laughs> <laughs> it's floating around in there somewhere. I don't that's know. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, and then she can drop the hex and then, you know, everybody can go back to their lives, hopefully, without too much interruption. I want to know who the freak the person in there that, um, what's his name? Agent Wu is tracking the, uh, the guy that, yeah. uh, when, when you're in trouble and they give you a new identity, it is called. Oh, witness protection. Witness protection program. So uh, <laughs> I want to know who the guy is in this protection program. You should know this. Isn't your dad in it? <laughs> You're not supposed to tell people. Uh, I know. I just you. outed him. <laughs> no. No, I know. I know. I know what you mean, like, mm-hmm. from the show. Yeah. Yeah. Because they keep talking about a witness protection uh, person, and I just, they haven't said anything about who that is yet very much like to know we're gonna get a lot of revelations in this last episode and i think we're gonna have to watch it together like if we're not physically in person like we're on the phone together or something yeah so we can just hear each other go yeah and then we'll just be like what 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 is going on (laughs) oh that's so fun let's do that next friday yes yes i would like that yay that would be be so fun (laughs) 
<laughs> so that's the plan for WandaVision. And to get back to something you would ask about during one of my tangents, you didn't hear <laughs> about the Flash movie then? I did not hear about the Flash movie. I had no idea that the Flash was getting a movie. I actually, I don't watch those WB shows, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, what, <laughs> Dawson Creek? I don't know. But like, I, I just don't watch them. So like, I have no idea. Um, so I don't really follow those DC um, storylines unless mm -hmm. a movie is coming out, but I haven't heard that movie. But I'm assuming they're going to, get different actors for movie and tv and then keep that separated. yes yeah and i can i can expound upon that a little bit because um Sounds yeah i've watched those cwdc shows um you know that are kind of like justice league 90210 or whatever um <laughs> i i like arrow i didn't come in arrow until maybe season three but I went back and watched everything, got caught up. Yeah. Arrow was really good. It's no longer on the air now. It, it was canceled last season after a really, I mean, eight year run, really good for a show like that. The Flash is good. Um, Supergirl is another one I like. Um, they just dropped a new Superman and Lois show, a spun off from their version. Of <laughs> I heard about that. <laughs> that looks cool, but I didn't hear about the I movie. haven't watched it yet yeah yeah but um yeah no that looks that looks super fun we should go see that if it's you know out in theaters and not dangerous to go <laughs> yes we should it's supposed to come out in 2022 the flash movie okay so hopefully but the way the way it works is it's not they're not spinning off the tv versions into a movie it's from the like the dc expanded universe of man of steel Batman mm. v Superman, their Justice League movie. And if you remember, we watched a couple of oh. those together. Flash is in Batman that movie. Batman v Superman and Justice League, yeah. That's right. The actor's Ezra Miller. I like it's Ezra gonna Miller. It's going to be a movie. Yeah, I remember you liking that version of the character. Yeah. He's going to get his own movie. But what they did last year in the CW shows. I totally have, forgot that I've seen those movies. Yeah. You're like, are they going to get a new actor? And I'm thinking, yeah, you saw him. I saw him already. <laughs> Oi. I so, really like those movies too. You did. Yeah, that was a fun oh day. We God. went to the comic book store and then we had wings and watched those movies. Yeah, that was freaking rad. That's freaking cool. So what they did is every year for those cw shows they do a crossover where all the shows have a storyline where they're all tied together mm -hmm. last year they did a show called crisis on infinite earths which was inspired by an 80s story from dc about multiple their multiple earths their multiverse what they did and it was one of the coolest things ever and it's warner brothers and dc synergizing too they had the TV Flash, Grant Gustin, briefly meet the movie Flash, Ezra Miller, establishing Ooh. them as all part of a multiverse. Like Ezra Miller had a cameo. So that's, that's all. Cool. Isn't that sweet? So I need what to watch these, doing, man. You need to get caught up. What they're going to do <laughs> with the Flash movie is they're going to have Ben Affleck come back as Batman. They're also going to have from another Earth in the multiverse, frickin' Michael Keaton reprise his role as Batman. Really? What? That's so cool. Actually, I'm very excited about this. He'll be old man Batman. Yeah. Old man Batman. That's really cool. Well, you know, before I was introduced to the Marvel Universe, Batman was my all-time favorite superhero. Um, so that's, yes. that's so cool. I'm so excited for that. What ever happened to that Robert Pattinson Batman? Is that coming out? Is that a movie that's happening? That's still going to come out, um, I think, later this year. Mm -hmm. I think he's just going to be another Batman in the multiverse. Although there is some speculation that the time travel storyline that could be involved with the Flash movie might do a reset of the DC universe in the movies where, like, the timeline will change and maybe they'll just insert Robert Pattinson into Ben Affleck's place, kind of oh, do it like that. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens, but I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger to come back. 
Oh, is Mr. Freeze? I hope so. <laughs> I'm hoping for Val Kilmer Batman too. Yes. I want to see everybody. Which is everybody. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> so Sounds yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to. Yes, I. That's so exciting. Okay, I have seen <laughs> the Flash in the DC movies, so I. I guess it wasn't super memorable for you. <laughs> I don't know. It was really good. No, I liked the I liked the Justin League movies, Justice League movies, and I know a lot of people are like on it, but I like them. I like the DC movies a lot. The only <laughs> there's only like one Aquaman, time. which we saw together. Um, and Shazam, we saw Shazam, Shazam together. Was Shazam was so great. good. I like Shazam yeah. is DC. Shazam is DC. Well, don't you remember Superman had a cameo at the end, and like you don't see his face, but you see the costume. Oh, that's right. Like he's walking up to the lunch table. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. You're right. That was really cool. Yes. Um. Yeah. There's only one instant. It's like maybe a second and a half that's ever brought me out of a DC movie and I was like super angry about it and that was in the in the first uh or in the Wonder Woman movie um yeah. right everything was amazing love that movie it's such a good movie until they're talking about the antagonist um Ares right it was Ares. a god of war and when he was now, I love this actor that played Ares, okay? He is yeah. in Harry Potter. I love him. He's great. However, if you're going to have Ares God of War and he just fallen out of Olympus or whatever, it's, it, it, it cannot be that actor with his little 40s mustache falling out of fucking Olympus. It just made bad. That's not what like Greek gods are going to look like, you know? <laughs> it just it brought me out. I was just like, what? 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 But I mean that actor. But what if they did look like that? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It just it would have made more sense to me, I guess, if they would have been like, oh, that the actor playing Ares is like, like that's what the, the form he's using in the human world, versus like that's just yes. what he looks like as an Olympian god. It's like, does he though? <laughs> but maybe he started the trend because that's how he already looked. You're not having any of this, are you? <laughs> mm -mm. No, no. But I digress. Great movie. That's how my mind Great works. Actor. Yes. Not me. My mind works that way. <laughs> I try and find ways to explain things that don't make sense. That's part of being a comic fan. Oh, you just yes. Gotta do it. I guess. Not me. Not me, because I, I love watching movies. So I'm just going to be like, what in the heckin' world was that? What was that? <laughs> but you know i was gonna go back to you asking about shazam like you were surprised ooh, yes. that was a dc movie i forgot <laughs> um no it's no there's actually there's like, a theme something... in my life i forgot yeah i'm right there with you though no but like there's um something historical about that because he wasn't originally from dc um there was a comic really? company called faucet um he was a faucet character Fawcett went out of business and DC like purchased the rights to use oh. it. And what they did was they said, those Shazam stories take place on Earth S. So they had their own Earth in the multiverse. I was going to say, they ran out of numbers and started using the alphabet. They started using letters. Then they're using characters. You know, <laughs> Emojis. Earth question mark. <laughs> Earth cry face. Earth poop emoji. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's what they would do, though. They would purchase characters from other companies, like Charlton Comics had a run of characters. You might know of some of them. Um, Captain Adam, Blue Beetle. Mm -hmm. um, 
who else was there? The question, um, they purchased those in the 80s. They ended up saying, oh, they're on Earth 4. That sounds good. I mean, I kind of like what they did. So that's that's kind of cool that they would be able to purchase these characters that would have otherwise died, you know, yeah, in, they gave in them, the world and they gave them a fresh start in another Earth. And that's that's actually really smart. That's really cool. I think they did it too with characters from quality comics. Um, I think Plastic Man was from quality comics, if I remember. Um, they said Plastic Man was on Earth 2 and on Earth 1. Hmm. But do you remember I mentioned that Crisis cool. on Infinite Earths story from the 80s that they did a CW crossover with the same title? Yeah. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> we talked that about was it like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> That was multiple subjects ago, but what yeah. they ended up doing was like the executives at DC were like, this whole multiverse thing is just getting out of control. You know, we have Earth, whatever, <laughs> like nobody could keep track of this. They're like, let's try and find an in story reason where we can get all the Earths condensed into one Uber Earth. And they use this big cosmic bad guy called the Anti Monitor to like facilitate this. It was a 12 issue storyline. Frickin' epic, um, written by Marv Wolfman, drawn by George Perez, who is one of the greatest comic artists because he is, his art is just so hyper detailed. I mean, yeah. he did one two page spread that had 200 characters in it and you could recognize each one. So awesome. And what they ended up doing is there were five Earths left because the Anti Monitor unleashed a wave of antimatter into the multiverse that was destroying all these Earths. Until you only had Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth S, Earth X, which is, I think, where the quality characters went, and Earth 4, which I just mentioned. At the end of the storyline, those Earths kind of merged into one that had one history, one past, present, and future. And it's like those characters had all coexisted all along. Any redundancies people didn't remember, like people didn't remember an Earth 2 Superman, it's like he no longer existed. Um, so it was kind of controversial because people were like, Ooh, now all these stories were invalidated that I enjoyed. Yeah, but then they're like, Okay, it's still cool because now we have all these new characters to play with. And um, in the late 80s and after, they explored that new Earth dynamic, and that's when I came into comics was with that new what they referred to as post crisis earth oh that's and it was cool. really fun yeah, yeah that sounds awesome <laughs> we'll have to get into it's, that one day like really get into it that's if really you want to cool. hear me talk for five hours we will definitely get into it <laughs> maybe one a day but not today <laughs> <laughs> today is not the day day is not that day <laughs> well there you go <laughs> so i was gonna say um like what have you been up to the last week has there been anything else nerdy in your life that you've been enjoying nope. <laughs> just working and wandavision um you know i get really excited for that um we did like i said we i did see the uh spider-man uh teaser trailer that was really cute and that's you know really awesome um as of right now, I have nothing. I have nothing. This is this is all I have in my life, Jason. That is not true because you did mention one thing I just remembered. What's that? After our last episode, I had, of course, brought up the topic of Cobra Kai. Suddenly, as if by decree from the gods, you were able to start watching it through Netflix when you had been unable to. Ooh. I know, isn't that crazy? Like I, <laughs> I go on here, I call them out, and then all of a sudden, like it works, and I'm like, yes, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai. <laughs> so you just started watching that, and you love it, right? I do. I'm like halfway through season two already. It's so good <laughs> because you know I I liked the Karate Kid movies. Fun fact: my father hated the Karate Kid movies growing up, so there you go. But I liked them. <laughs> Does um, that shock we you? Need to go back. We need to go back to that. What was your dad's reason for not liking them? Because wasn't he into martial arts? No, I was into No, he wasn't. Arts. Oh, you were. He, well, I thought I he had passed it on to you. 
no no he he okay funny fact as a kid I loved the Power Rangers loved the Power Rangers I thought they were so cool but my dad's like okay well there is a um there is a karate studio right next door let's go start you and we walk in and who owns this karate studio no, Mr. Uh, Miyagi Mr. Miyagi <laughs> The Green Ranger, Tommy on Power Rangers. What? I know. So, <laughs> I did you hear my voice go off like ten octaves? But, Sensei um, Green Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Sensei Green Ranger. Um, so it, that's how he actually started me is because my love for Power Rangers. Um, and then I have like all. <laughs> you were that age demographic, right? I was. Well. Yeah, I was a little young, but like I thought it was just like the coolest thing ever. So he started me there. Um, and then that studio or that dojo closed. And then another one right next door opened. So I started there as well. And that's where I did competitions and things like that. But um Oh, yeah. the All Valley <laughs> karate tournament you were in. <laughs> where you were disqualified for your grade kick. All right, Zana, what do you got for us? <laughs> My my, my tiny little karate trophies. Uh, uh, this one I think was second place and this one was uh, third place. And then I also have when I got um, uh, disqualified for making a kid cry because I punched him in the face, um, I got the uh, Anna, fighting spirit you're, award. You're hardcore. And there's a bonsai tree on it. I love it. Yeah, so this was for the um, Grand Championship Martial Arts Tournament for United Studios of Self-Defense. So, Are there photos of you doing karate or in your gi or anything? Probably. You I'll, need to find them. If I, okay, if I find them, um, there's probably pictures of me somewhere. If I find them, I will insert them here. And we can see little Zana can ass. <laughs> or maybe you could put them on the Instagram too at I'll Nerd put them Initiation. On the Instagram too. <laughs> and hopefully you're all following that. And because mm -hmm. Zana's finding really fun pictures of yes. me and her doing fun nerdy stuff. Yeah. So that's like, a fun, fun spot to go. Yeah, go uh go check out our Instagram. And if you haven't already, and if you like what you're hearing, go ahead and um like and subscribe to us and you know we're gonna have this uh we're gonna post videos uh once a week or video and audio uh to different things like soundcloud and um hopefully we'll get into uh spotify and, and google and all that good stuff and apple uh, apple Podcasts, which would be really cool um i'm working on yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah so uh, go check us out anywhere you like to listen to podcasts or, or here on YouTube and uh, we'll be here for you every week. And uh, so that would be, uh, that'll be very cool. <laughs> now, one else? more thing. Yes. Yes. You never said why your dad didn't like the Karate Kid movies. I have to know this. He. Because <laughs> okay, I so respect your dad's opinion very much. He does not like uh, Ralph Macchio. He thinks that actor is super super annoying also <laughs> also the guy who plays Miyagi he didn't like him as Miyagi he liked him as the guy from at, uh um Happy Days is he had a stint Pat Morita was the actor and he played Happy Arnold Days. on Happy Days yeah. which was a comedic role right so my dad liked him as Arnold and not as Miyagi <laughs> He saw Miyagi being all serious and he's like, I can't, I can't get into shit? this. He's Arnold. He's all zany and slapsticky. Right, right. So, was... <laughs> I mean, I respect that. I get it. I, you know, some people are like that. I can respect that. Totally. I disagree, but I can respect it. Well, that's how that goes. <laughs> I was going to say, it, this past week, I guess the nerdiest thing I've done, aside from just my normal everyday nerddom of like reading comics and stuff, um, I started watching um, or rewatching The Muppet Show on Disney Plus, and that's been really, really enjoyable. And my um, 
my girlfriend has two younger daughters one's five and one's three so Mm -hmm. i've been showing it to them the three-year-old especially really likes it and i think she's right at that like magic age where like the muppets are just really cool i i love the muppets too um speaking of our friend Jaden, she her favorite muppet that she talks about all the time is grover and i think that's adorable and yes. so cute but <laughs> my favorite muppets all of my life and i've always identified with these muppets are the two grumpy old men <laughs> statler and waldorf i love statler and waldorf i love them so much i always have i've always identified with them because i understood their humor <laughs> They're so funny how they're just crapping on everything. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a grumpy old man my, in my regular life. So like I get them. And we have the same soul patterns. <laughs> I, I feel a similarity to them as well. Um, and, you know, we were watching it the other day, me and uh, Katie and the girls, and they came on and I go, I go, Katie, is that me and Rob in the future? Rob, if you're listening or watching, we are probably chatting with each other at work right now while you're watching me do this. Might be freaking <laughs> you out. Um, Hi, Rob. Rob's one of my good friends. Um, Zana knows him too. Um, we have a similar old man mentality as well, which I just, for a while I ran away from and now I just embrace it. It's I think that's why we're such good friends too, because I am also an old man. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you have an older soul. Me too. <laughs> just like I do. Yeah. Yeah. My mother always says that I've been older than her since the day I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing before we wrap up is, Zana, you're going to be excited for this. We have listener questions. That's so cool. Knowledge is power. Oh my God. That's Schoolhouse right. Schoolhouse Rock coming out. <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock, I love. Watched yeah. that all through my childhood. I Me still too. have watched it recently. Yeah, so great. so great, and it's so educational. It is. Thank you. It makes the learning only way I, fun. The only way I know about the Bill of Rights. <laughs> <laughs> Not from civics class. From a cartoon animated in the seventies. That's right. Oh, Knowledge is power. Um, <laughs> what are our questions? I'm so excited that we have questions. Yes, hopefully this will be an ongoing segment we're going to do. We'll call it Knowledge is Power. Um, This question, or it's two questions actually, comes from um, my good friend, John. Shout out to John. You're awesome. Uh, John John lives in the Detroit area of Michigan. He and I have known each other for over 20 years. Um, We met in college. Um, He is also a big nerd. Um, He is into comics, but he's into more like underground indie comics. Mm, um this guy yeah. is also one of the biggest magic the gathering dudes i've ever met um, my cousin the same is the same loves magic the awesome. Gathering. his question to us was um jason what was you and z's first comic convention experience or sure. convention experience of any kind really uh and then his second question is what's the best con in michigan um so yeah. zana we'll start with you that first question what was your first con my very my very first con um was uh the big anime convention at anime expo in anaheim back when it was in anaheim because it moved to la later but um i used to live right in between disneyland and the convention center so i would walk to either but um i would used to go into the back way and sneak into conventions and (laughs) um So the very first conventions I ever went to were uh, Anime Expo in Anaheim back in the day, and it was awesome. And that's where I just fell in love with conventions. Um, I I grew up with anime, so it was just really big in my household. Um, My my sister and I would just like sneak into these conventions, and it was so fun. It's where I started doing like, you know, little cosplays that I thought were cute or something like that. And um, that's where like my love for that first started and you know since I've grown up I would pay to get into conventions legally but (laughs) when you're a kid you just walk right (laughs) but you know back in the early 2000s it was it was a lot of fun um to go in there and experience that and just kind of grow up with that so that was my first experience what about you so my first um con experience was 
I think it was the spring of 1991. I was in fifth grade and it was the Motor City Comic Con. In the venue, I think this is in, when it was in Dearborn, Michigan at the mm. Dearborn Civic Center. Um, I can't remember how I heard about it. It might have been at the local comic book store I went to, which was in Howell, Michigan. It was a place called Atomic Comics. That place has long been out of business. Oh. That was a great store. They had really good comics. They had old toys. Um, they had the old like Star Wars toys from like the late 70s and early 80s. Yeah. Um, like the Imperial Walkers and stuff like that. And that was just a fun place to explore. The guy behind the counter looked like the comic book guy from The Simpsons, because that's what every guy looked like back then who ran a comic book store. Um, usually they had flyers for cons and stuff like that there. And um, yeah, I think my dad must have had the idea. He's like, do you want to go to this? And I was like, sure. And um, he took me and it was just really, it was so much fun. It was a lot to take in, a lot of comics to look at. Um, I remember we went to a Marvel Comics panel where they were talking about upcoming storylines. Like, I think they had some of the editors there from the time. Um, it was just a really fun experience. Um, you didn't see as much cosplay back then as you do nowadays. Um, yeah. It was still more of a boys club back then. Um, OG Sausage nerds. Fest. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. OG nerds, as I like to call them. I mean, the uniform was like a black t-shirt, beard, uh, long hair and a ponytail, the teardrop glasses like I have. Yeah. That was like 80% of the dudes there looked like that. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And I went almost every year after that for maybe 10 years. And the way the Motor City Com went, um, it was only in Dearborn once a year and then it expanded to twice a year. They'd do one in the fall and one in the spring. Then eventually they started divvying it up where they started having it in Novi at the old Expo Center in the spring and then Dearborn Civic Center in the fall. Then it just went to Novi just once a year in the spring. And that's how it is now. When you and I went in 2019, that's like the format it is now. Yeah, that and was so much fun. And that was our first con together. With the That was our first con mm -hmm. going together, yes. And we had a good time, didn't we? Yes, it was so much fun. See, <laughs> you wore your Batman shirt. And then I, our communication got crisscrossed. <laughs> and I came as, instead of Catwoman, I was Cat Lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're that in your everyday life anyway. I mean. I was, yes, but I showed up with um my cat uh they were um cat creepers and with my dress i was just had a bunch of angry cats on it with cat ears so i was like i was the cat lady to your batman it, it worked <laughs> i thought that was so funny and but then we got to meet like all of those cool people and felicia day liked my dress yeah, she but was a sweetheart. Very really nice. Cool. Barry she Williams. Was really... <laughs> Barry Williams, Greg Brady from the Brady oh Bunch. Um, he had a real dad vibe. Um, he was funny. Um, really? Do you remember his quote, Zana? <laughs> <laughs> you guys make me feel tall. <laughs> yeah, and if if everyone checks out our Instagram, we got it's a few there. of these pictures up there. Um, us with Barry, um, you and Felicia. Mm -hmm. um we met other people too we um we i met lou ferrigno who played the incredible hulk in the in the 80s that was cool um, yes who else oh jack o'halloran who i'm sure a lot of people are like who yes. um he was a character actor in the 70s 80s and 90s um he played one of the kryptonian villains in the superman movies he played non the big tall like non -vo verbal one um who had a beard um, and he was just a really nice guy. He was um, remember, like, I got my picture with him, and he's like, hey, does your friend want to be in the picture? He's like, bring her over. Bring her <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, he was just really, he was really, really cool. really nice, yeah. I'm trying to think, was there anybody else that we met? I mean, we saw people there that we didn't meet. Um, Nev Campbell was there. R2-D2. Um, we did meet R2-D2, yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. It was really we cool. We met Alf. We met we did Darth met Vader. Alf. <laughs> the Scooby Gang was there. <laughs> yeah, the Scooby Gang was there. Boba Fett. Um, yeah, it was just—it was yeah. a lot of fun. 
<laughs> yeah, and we had fun too talking to the dealers. You know, like there were a lot of cool vendors there, a lot of cool artists. Um, I got to meet two comic artists. Yeah, that was right. That was really cool. And I love because that was just so much fun. But um, on to the the second question: What is the best convention in Michigan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I would. I I really enjoyed that one. Um, now there once a year there is a big anime convention in downtown Grand Rapids. That's that's a lot of fun as well. You're not big into anime, but um, mm-hmm. really, yeah. if there is any time of convention that I can go to and just be submerged in that community and shop, then I will be there. I don't know. Which one do you think is the best? Because all of them are so much fun. I would say I would go with Motor City. Um, yeah, that one's You get cool. the most bang for your buck. You get cool celebrities. You get so mm-hmm. much to look at. Um, some people might think it's too big. And there have been times where I've thought that as well. Like, there's just so much to take in. You really need more I than one day. That. The crowds can be okay. big sometimes. So I well, like that's... Grand Rapids Comic Con too. I mm-hmm. mean, I think that's like, a, it's a smaller scale version of Motor City, but it's still cool. I don't know. Um, I like the big ones. We can always take a Friday off of work and just to go. And I think that's what we did that one day. We just both. We did go on a Friday. Yeah, yeah. we just uh, both took that day off of work and went to the Comic Con. And it wasn't that crowded because it was a Friday instead of a weekday, which. I don't know I kind of that. exactly I think that's the best way to do it um and I'm, I'm remembering stuff from when we went do you remember we were walking down an aisle and a guy in a Mork costume from Mork and Mindy walked by us yes. and, I, and I just went nanu nanu and, nanu and he nanu. turned around and he was like nanu nanu, nanu and nanu. we just kept walking it was amazing <laughs> oh and then I got really 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 excited because I saw a um the drag version of uh the Sanderson sisters and I was like yes and I like ran up to them and I yes. took uh, like you were you were doing something else and I just saw them at the corner of my eye and I was like Sanderson sisters and I went up there and then they were like these wonderful performers in drag and I was like oh my god you guys are so I had to take pictures with them as well <laughs> oh and I talked you into buying uh, yes <laughs> was it the Batmobile that I talked you into buying <laughs> oh no and it's in my closet behind me right now it was um kit oh it's Knight kit writer that's right it was um, kit from night rider and i was like no you need this with no you david need it Hass, david hasselhoff figure came with it yes and you talked me into it and i'm, I'm grateful you did because i love it <laughs> it's true no <laughs> i used to have that toy as a kid and then it got like lost over the years So I'm glad to have it back. You know, it's really great. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad I talked you into it too. (laughs) So, you know, that was a lot of fun. That was such good memories. Yeah, and I I would agree that those would be like the the best cons to go to in Michigan. So if anybody else has any uh, questions that they'd like us to answer, anything you want a shout out, just uh, comment below and we'll do that for you or, you know, um, message us and we'll get to it because that's really cool that we get to interact with um, our friends like that and I love that (laughs) yes and I'm going to give a few shout outs um you know we've had a really great response to our first episode so far I've been really pleased with it are amazing Um, a lot of people listening and hearts a lot of people watching we love all of you yeah um you know I'll name a few names my work daughter Amy appreciate so much your comments you know, Amy um, said, because of watching that first episode, it's making her interested in reading comics. And we've talked about some stuff she can hey, get into. That's so awesome. I'm so happy about that. To, to <laughs> spread the gospel, get people interested. Oh. We'll get more people to join the club. Yeah. It's so get great. Get that nerd um, initiation going, yeah. not just for me, but for every one of you, too. You just come along on our journey. For everybody. Yes. Yep. We'll get you all initiated. You know, we had great comments from um, Lizzie, from Johanna, yes. um, Stacy, oh, so Peggy, all great people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Every, that's so cool that, you know, we have, you know, this uh, source of support 
and just outpouring of love from everybody. And I think that is, that's so awesome that we get to experience that. Yeah. I feel very, very loved. Very loved. <laughs> Touches the heart. <laughs> All right. Well, Jason, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. You are welcome. And thank you for letting me initiate you into the world of nerddom. <laughs> thank you. Well, I just have one more question for you, Jason. Am I a nerd now? Not quite. There's still more to learn, young Avenger. Until next time. <laughs> nerd, nerd your, your heart, heart out. out. <laughs> nerd your heart out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm just laughing. <laughs> <laughs>